Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with the second part of the 11th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going over a hand that one of my students played. He's named Hero up here in the top left. This is a 2-5 live No Limit Cash game. Uh, but today we're going to be taking a look at this hand from our villain's point of view, Magambo, here. Uh, that's not his real name in real life, these are just random names. But, um... As you see, we are playing 2-5 no limit. We are very deep stacked. And right here with 7-6 of diamonds, if I was in Magambo spot, I would love a call. This is as a hand that is going to get you... Uh, you're going to be able to win very large pots with this hand. You're going to be able to flop very good draws or even like two pair type hands and usually be pretty confident getting a lot of money in the pot. So you flop pretty much the nuts here. Uh, you, need, you have a gut shot and you have a flush draw. And with these type of draws, you actually do need to be a little bit careful because in multi-way pots, you will find that the 7-6 uh, flush draw is actually not good a lot of the time if you hit because someone may have something like the ace-9 or something like that, that ace-9 of diamonds or queen-jack of diamonds. Uh, action checks to the preflop raiser who continuation bets, and I think this is a pretty good spot to check raise. Now that the field has been thinned significantly, it's pretty unlikely the hero has a flush draw. And even if he does have a flush draw, you have a live 7, 6, and 5, so it's not like you're drawing stone dead. So right here, I really like pushing the action. Um, I would go ahead and raise it up to probably 200. I think that's going to be a pretty good raise size. Uh, Magambo actually makes it 165, which I'm, I don't really hate. The problem with this is you're going to induce a lot of calls, and you don't really want to get called here. You'd rather just pick up the pot. Or, you'd rather your opponent re-raise you to, like, 450, and then you can shove it on him, and then you know, pick up a lot of equity that way. Whenever you have a draw like this, there is a lot of value in just um, picking up the pot here. So, you make it 165, and sure enough, Hero does make it 400. So at this point, you got to think that the Hero has either a very good flush draw or a very big made hand like aces, kings, queens, or possibly a set. If he has a set, we're not in great in a, in a great spot, but if he does have something like aces, kings, queens, we are, you know, 47% or so to win, which is which is good, you know. I mean, that's a very good amount, especially if your opponent may fold sometimes. And you have to remember that if you do pound the money in here, your opponent may find a fold with, with aces, which, of course, is not the best way to play aces, as we discussed in um, part one of this episode, when, whenever the hero has queens here. But I, I, do, I do think this is a very good shove spot. Notice that there will be... Well, there's already uh, $665 in the pot. And if you shove, after you call, there will be 900 in the pot. So you're pushing just a little bit more than pot. And that will give you a decent amount of fold equity. And anytime you can get a lot of fold equity, that's a very good thing. So you do shove here. Now it's back to the hero. And now if the hero does have... Ace King of Diamonds, well I guess with Ace King of Diamonds he'll always call because he has a gut shot. But say he has Queen Jack of Diamonds, this is a spot where he probably should fold because now he's not really getting great odds to call. He's going to need to win something like 38% of the time and he's probably going to win right around that. So you're forcing him to make a giant coin flip if he does want to call here. Plus he has to worry that he could be behind now of like Ace King of Diamonds. Maybe not Ace King of Diamonds, but like Ace Six of Diamonds. So right here I actually love Magambo's play. I really have no problem with this whatsoever, so... I know that's that's not what you hear too often from weeklypokerhand.com, where I look at someone's play and say it's pretty good, but I think I would have played this hand pretty much exactly like Magambo did. I would have raised a little bit larger on the turn. I'm sorry, on the turn. What am I saying? Um, I would have raised a little bit larger in my initial check raise. But uh, besides that, I think he played the hand pretty well. One thing worth mentioning is that some players in this spot lead out for like 65, but notice what happens if you lead out for 65, someone raises you you re-raise, and then they shove. Now, instead of you give you uh, giving you being the one going all in, now you're forced calling all in. So this is something you need to think about whenever you uh, are playing very deep stacked. You need to think, who is reasonably going to get the last bet in? And if the answer is the other player, try to figure out a way to make that you, because when you have a draw, you want to have fold equity. And in, whenever we're this deep, uh, notice here, it would be absurd for the hero to shove here. That'd be way too much money to win just a, a few chips. So if the hero does decide to re-raise, you're going to be able to shove on him. But if it was the other, the other way around, say you bet 65, he made it 165, then you made it 400, then he could shove, 
and then you'd be the one forced calling off, and that is not what you want. So, again, I think Magambo played this hand great, and I think the hero kind of butchered it, but the hero, in his email, said that he does know that he butchered it. So, as long as you recognize the spot and learn from it and don't do it again, there's really nothing wrong with losing the money, but... You know, the goal in poker is to be able to think about every situation and figure out what the best line is. That way, whenever these spots come up, you're not losing money. You look at this and you recognize, okay, I have queens. I need to call, get a good turn and a good river, and just try to get to showdown cheaply. And instead, the hero piled the money in, and he did end up getting it in slightly good, but you're going to be getting it in bad against this guy's range a lot of the time. So, that's going to be it for this week's episode of Weekly Poker Hand. And again, if anyone has any hands they'd like me to go over, feel free to send them in. I have, I'm more than willing to take a look at them. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.